immediately to our county board or to our county manager for the COVID update. Thank you, Madam Chair. Members, good morning. Good to be with you on this Tuesday. I'm gonna turn it over to the Director of Public Health, Kathy Hedin, to kick us off. Good morning, and thank you, County Manager O'Connor, and thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Here's the current COVID situation update in Minnesota and Ramsey County, and we will go on over to the dashboard to show the situation. In Minnesota, 90,942 people have tested positive for COVID-19. That's an additional 6,000 people in the last week. Since September 17th, the state has seen anywhere from 900 to 1,300 cases per day. The end of August and September have seen some of the highest case days uh, than any other days since we started tracking the pandemic in Minnesota. Total cases requiring hospitalization to date across the state is 7,199. Hospitalized as of yesterday is 255 in the state. The hospitalizations have gone up. And hospitalized in the ICU as of yesterday is 128, and that actually has gone down a bit. 2,021 people have died from COVID across the state. That's an additional 44 people in the last week. The total approximate number of completed tests is 1,855,308, and that's over 100,000 tests uh, that were completed in the last week. We will move over to the Ramsey County update. Uh, as you can see, uh, the new cases by day, I expect those uh, last few days uh, over there on, I think, uh, my right, um, will go up as the data comes in from MDH this week with the high case counts. Although reports are showing that uh, the higher case counts are in the southern part of our state. If we scroll further down, you'll see the cumulative case rate per 10,000 residents and the weekly case rate, which went from 9.4 actually down to 7.1. And the weekly case rate as of September 5th was actually down to 4.7. So those are good metrics for us. They're under 5%, which is what we're looking for. It means we have a good amount of testing and people um, are getting hopefully the, the help that they need if they are sick. Let's scroll down to the cumulative totals. Uh, we've had over 10,599 people who have tested positive uh, to date in Ramsey County. If you scroll down a little bit more, you'll be able to see those numbers. That's 600 more people than in the last week, and unfortunately, we've lost an additional seven people uh, with a total of 332 people who have lost their lives to COVID. We will move on over to the testing page as I wanna highlight um, a lot of testing that we have going on in our community over the next week and months. Uh, we are currently offering multiple testing events this week, uh, beginning tomorrow, September 23rd, from two to six at the Mexican Consulate. Emphasis there is on people who speak Spanish or identify as Hispanic, Latino, Latina. Uh, staff and volunteers who speak Spanish will be on site to help answer any questions. There will also be two testing events at Mount Olivet Baptist Church focused on the black African American community this Thursday and Friday, September 24th and 25th from 2 to 6 p.m. And then beginning this Saturday, September 26th, we will resume our Aldrich Arena testing site from 1 to 6 p.m. You can find our team there every Saturday, Saturday throughout the fall. These testing sites are in partnership with uh, the Mexican Consulate, Clues, Minnesota Community Care, St. Mary's Health Clinic, Stair Step Foundation, Minnesota Department of Health, and M Health Fairview. We're also working with Minnesota Department of Health to add additional community testing sites, will be, which will be known soon. Uh, you can sign up for these testing events on our website at www.ramseycounty.us slash COVID, and you can click on the testing site link, uh, and then click on the language that you need, and you'll be turned over to where you can register for a testing event. I will now turn it back over to County Manager O'Connor. Thank you, Director Hadeen. I think it is a testament of the community and collective strength happening as we continue to hear more names of organizations and parties involved in the community testing 
that continues to be offered across Ramsey County and something that will be important as we head into the fall and the winter. A few brief updates from me and then we'll stand for any questions. A week ago when we talked about COVID-19, one of the questions that was asked was about stories from others in our organization and their experiences. I would direct board members and all staff to this week's From the County Manager column focused on this topic. Many have written in and shared those stories and We'll share themes, broad themes and lessons and continued areas of work as a part of this week's column to lift up the voice of many across different areas in our organization. To every employee who's spent time sharing their story with myself or with others, uh, a continued thank you. It takes courage to do that. And it's important that we respect the privacy of people as we talk about the themes with their stories so that um, not everyone has to live their COVID experience out with everyone else to know, but to continue to acknowledge that uh, as a large collective of 4,000 people, we are learning a lot as an organization and we need to continue to learn and grow. And I look forward to elevating uh, those messages today. As we look at the emergency period, one of the common questions that you all have continued to check in on and we have heard from other avenues as well is how long will the emergency period go? I have no answer that I come with today on that particular topic. Um, it moves at the course of the virus and our ability to contain it. However, this week the governor has announced uh, some preliminary ideas around thresholds at the state level for emergency orders and how long emergency orders may stay in effect. They're not, nothing right now that has been set in stone, but it was an exploratory and initial look at a conversation. As we close today's COVID-19 update here in a moment or move into the discussion phase, Madam Chair, I would be interested in any thoughts board members have about aligning Ramsey County's emergency period explicitly with uh, the direction laid out by the governor, which is obviously flexible and may change over time. But my best answer right now to the question would be our, our attempt as the largest public health agency in the state of Minnesota and as one of the largest county governments is to be as consistent as possible to remove ambiguity or confusion with others. And so um, open to any thoughts or discussion or if we need to lead to a broader policy discussion around that at a future meeting, but something that is clearly out there and on the radar and I wanted to bring before you all today. Finally, as we balance competing needs to transact business and look at other areas of work that ramp up, notably elections during a general election season, but all the other work that continues across the organization. And we work with the board to ensure that we are bringing you the most timely and relevant information and the best opportunity to discuss it in full. We are going to move to a little less than every week on our COVID-19 update as a general plan moving forward. For weeks where we have service team committee of the whole updates, which are more meaty and take up a significant portion of time, you will not see a COVID-19 update as of October for those particular weeks. I want to stress that if there are questions from the board, we will make sure during County Connections to get those questions about COVID-19 so that we can provide responses quickly. And if at any moment public health feels the need to bring a COVID-19 update to the board due to pressing public health information, there is no schedule planning that'll override that. We will work with the chair to seek to add a COVID-19 update to the agenda. Um, but hopefully this is a way to continue to balance the need to provide timely and relevant information to the board and the broader public with the need to ensure that other information and actions also receive the public attention and discussion that they need as we move through a long pandemic period together. With that, Madam Chair, the director and I would stand for any questions that you may have and thank you for your time. This concludes this morning's COVID-19 update. Thank you very much for the update, noting that testing is up and our positivity rate trending down, and those are good things. Uh, and that also we're in very, very good company as you share with us the number of community organizations that continue to assist in addressing this COVID emergency. Uh, very much appreciation for all that you've shared and for the adjustment of our meetings to ensure that we are able to hear our COVID updates, that we are able also to fit in the workshops that we need to do and that we also have good time for county connections and for our legislative update and board updates as well. 
I do have a number of hands raised. I know that today we have a workshop inside our board meeting. We will take questions and then move on to the balance of our agenda. I have Commissioner Maris Castillo and then Commissioner Reinhardt. Thank you. Great, thank you, Madam Chair. And, and more just a quick comment to uh, Ryan's question about uh, where we sit with alignment with the governor. And I just want to say that I do support, you know, alignment for the sake of consistency and continuity and, and really to the broader message for our community. But that said, I also think that we have a laser focus on what's right for our specific communities. And so, so I, I appreciate the idea of alignment. I really also want to say that I have complete trust and confidence in our own public health here in Ramsey County and the approach that we have really taken on our communities of color and our most vulnerable populations. And so I would just want us to, you know, when it's possible and appropriate, but if we need to do more, that we do more and that we allow ourselves and not constrain ourselves just for the sake of alignment, but that we, you know, when it's appropriate that we align, but if we need to do more that we maintain that control uh, for our community. Thank you very much. I'll go to Commissioner Reinhardt and then Commissioner McGuire. Thank you. I agree with uh, Commissioner Maris Castillo about the need to be flexible, and I know that our county has done that in the past. Um, one size doesn't fit all, and when you see some of the COVID numbers and uh, from the state versus uh, Ramsey County, I think the um, it, it, it does tell a different story. So we need to remain flexible and provide those services alignment where we can. Um, and I think most of what we do probably will be aligned, but we need to make sure that we can meet those needs. As far as the COVID-19 update um, every week, I understand obviously that we have to um, make time for the other business that we have to do. I would hope that even though we don't necessarily have the update uh, given orally, that we can have a COVID-19 as part of our agenda update so that we can provide um, a fact sheet or something that gives us those numbers. Because I think um, it is important that people continue to pay attention to it. And the less we talk about it, the less we um, provide data as far as what is happening, the more folks may think that it's not as important, and it is. Um, and so I do think that I understand the need for uh, the time for us to get work and do our business, but I also think that we need to make sure that it stays in everybody's uh, radar so that, um, so that it doesn't appear that it's not um, something we have to deal with. Um, and especially for those that are, are um, getting tested or in the hospital or people who lose their lives, I think it's incredibly important to make sure that we are honoring the folks that are doing the work and, um, and offering support to the families who are suffering because of it. So I hope that we would have that on our agenda every week. It doesn't have to be something that's actually presented at the county board meeting, but if people want the updated information, it would be available through the uh, through our agenda. That's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, county manager, did you want to share anything on that point? I would just say that we do have our dashboard and the opportunity to reflect weekly uh, that the dashboard is updated and additional information can be found there. Uh, that as the information becomes standardized and we can get people uh, to be able to look there, I think that that helps us quite a bit and your point is very valid. We want to keep it front and center and ensure that people do not believe this is something that is uh, winding down at this point, as it is not. We have much more uh, to look forward to um, with our community. So I will turn to the county manager for any additional comment on that before moving then to Commissioner McGuire. Thank you, Madam, Madam Chair, Commissioner Reinhardt. I think 
if I heard you correctly, ensuring that there is a direct way to access that information from the agenda each week, whether or not there's a verbal COVID briefing, we will explore that and find the best way to do that, whether that be a link to the testing site information specifically, the COVID-19 dashboard. If I heard that wrong, please clarify, but otherwise we will ensure to do that and we can make that happen as a part of our plan moving forward. That is exactly what I wanted to see. Thank you. And thank you very much. Commissioner McGuire. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I agree with uh, Commissioner Reinhardt and Commissioner Mattis Castillo on, on both, uh, both of their points. I, I uh, think that we should align with the state as much as possible, but continue to be flexible because I do think that we, our public health department has a great pulse on our community and we should be standing ready to, to either be more strict or, or less as, as we see fit. So I, I do think that, you know, that we can look to the state for, the, for guidance, but then be flexible on our own for, for how we proceed. And then I wanna echo Commissioner Reinhardt's um, con comments about keeping the, this, uh, keeping the COVID report, you know, part of our agenda, if, if, if only to just direct people to it, because I, I think it's very dangerous that people think we're, we're coming out of it. You know, we no longer talk about it on our board meetings. We don't do this. I mean, we're heading, we're heading into indoor time period now where I'm really nervous that people are gonna continue to be more lax and, and we're gonna unfortunately, um, you know, be, I'm, I'm worried we're heading into a, a, a more, um, a period of, of more cases. So I just uh, hope we don't uh, model that we think this is not as important anymore. And I'm just worried that by taking it off our agenda, we, we might give that, that signal, even though we know we're not, even though our dashboard is. So I just encourage us to think about that. So uh, just that acknowledgement that we, we know this is still out there, we're still dealing with it. So uh, with that, and then Madam Chair and, and County Manager, I have, I have one question on, on the COVID report, if, if I could ask that. Um, we did hear this weekend about the opening of the deck center in Duluth for saliva testing. And I'm excited that that part of the state is getting that. And I'm just curious how, what the um, plans are for us to um, get to that. I know that that's probably a, a pilot site for the state and that we are you know, gonna see how that goes. And just curious if we're, I, I expect we're part of those discussions and if you have any other comments on when when we might see some of that. Madam Chair, Commissioner McGuire, I'll answer the previous part of your question first, then turn it over to Director Hadeen to go specifically to your question about the deck. Uh, two, two pieces, I don't in any way want to construe today's schedule shift or way in which we're trying to approach the balancing of various agenda items as any suggestion that COVID is lessening in terms of its importance or its concern across our community. Our dashboard shows the daily impact that this virus has across this community. It has a daily impact on our employees that both is short and long-term. And it is um, something that we need to remain ever vigilant with the board in working on. And so um, even these current plans need to be able to be adjusted as we move into the fall and winter. And just like we do with the incident management team, we are trying to meter out our available time each day to where the biggest priority demand and need is while remaining ever vigilant that we remain in an emergency period with a global pandemic. And our best comp from 100 years ago shows multiple waves as complacency became an issue. And so I just wanna acknowledge that part that this is not meant to be set in stone, um, maybe an attempt to try to balance some of the other pieces that we know the board has cared about and wanted time to ensure we discuss. And on weeks when we hopefully have a lighter update to share and can do some of that digitally, we will do that. Um, I will turn to Director Hadeen to answer the second half of your question. Madam Thank Chair you. and Commissioner McGuire, thanks for asking that question. I was happy to hear too that Duluth was ready to go with their semi-permanent site at the deck. Um, St. Paul and Ramsey County have also been identified as a county and a community that will have a semi-permanent site. We are a little different than our Duluth uh, friends in that uh, we have a very diverse uh, county. And so right now we're working with the city of St. Paul to identify the best site that 
uh, that we could use for this. We need to make sure that it's in a community with access to transportation that allows people to walk up in the fall time and the spring, but also has indoor area and parking and maybe even a drive-through. Um, and so we're trying to find a diamond in the rough right now for the uh, type of building that is available that isn't being used for something else. Uh, so we're working with the, uh, the, the SEOC at the state um, and their testing leads. We're working with the city to identify a site and I think we are getting closer um, to finding uh, one because those sites need to open soon. Um, and we're excited that uh, our state will have its own saliva testing lab soon. Right now, we, it's not up and running, and so testing kits will be sent to New Jersey, actually, um, and then results will sent, be sent back here uh, to Minnesota. But we, it is in the works. We're working on a, a final site, and when that information is ready to go, we will make sure that we provide it to you here. Thank you so much for all of that. I, I really appreciate it. So we look forward to that. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner McGuire. Uh, Commissioner Fretham. Thank you, Chair Carter. Uh, in, in terms of alignment with the state, can I just ask a question to clarify that? In aligning with their metrics, um, when looking statewide, I, I'm trying to think this through, it's possible that the state as a whole could be meeting the governor's metrics, but Ramsey County, just because of our, our different measures, could um, not be at that, those state metrics yet. So we would con you know, consider ourselves still in the emergency potentially at those metrics and would consider our keep our emergency order in place till we hit metrics. Is that, am I thinking this through correctly? M Madam Chair, Commissioner Fretham, I think today was actually an opportunity just to kind of hear some of where commissioners may be at on the topic to begin with, quite frankly. So we don't come with any preconceived idea of exactly how to apply it. But I would say based on the previous comments and then yours, uh, that's something I jotted down on my notes before you had a chance to even say that, which is we don't have a we don't seem to have any issue with the metrics likely being laid out uh, for statewide measurement of an emergency period, um, ensuring that the thresholds have been met in, on a localized scale in Ramsey County could be extremely important, particularly as we think about being the most urbanized, most diverse county in the state, and it's it ensuring that we don't leave the emergency period early just because other areas may have a different behavior. Um, and so there is that part of the flexibility that would likely be something we need to consider. And I appreciate the thoughts that you and your colleagues have shared here as we try to balance this idea around consistency with a strong and robust public health approach. Thank Great. you very that, that, much. I just want to kind of them. know what alignment oh, means before we, uh, just we were wanna... to commit to it. I, I don't think I have a problem with the Go metrics ahead. themselves. It's just a matter of thinking through it. Thank you very much. And so I have no further hands up in conclusion. I'd just like to summarize that we will continue to address our community and our community's needs as we look to metrics and guidance and alignment with the state to ensure that we have that alignment, but that we're also able to be as flexible as possible uh, based on our community's needs. We will continue to reference our COVID update during our board members and we'll, during our board meetings, and we'll be working to ensure that that is done in the very best and most appropriate way uh, based on our current circumstances so that we are able to ensure that people can find the information that is needed and will hear the information that is most salient for the moment. Um, we will continue, as we have in the past, also to conduct our moments of silence based on our ongoing emergency. And at this point in time, I would ask board members for a brief moment of silence to recognize uh, those who have been impacted by COVID-19 in our community and its ongoing impact on all of us. For just a few moments of silence, please. 